Hey, Luckies. Welcome back to Luck Management. It's been a little while, but we are back and better than ever. Today is September 9th, 2024, and I just want to get started, get it all out on the table. We lost to NIU. We lost to a team that we were ranked the highest we've ever been, the 28-point favorite at possibly one of the worst losses Notre Dame has ever encountered. Feels like back in the day when App State beat Michigan. But this is not crazy for Notre Dame. This happens more than you would ever think. This happens a lot. We lost to Marshall two years ago. My first home game as a student, that was <laughs> something else. That was crazy. I can't even remember all of it, and I'm glad I didn't because that was the most disgusting loss. But that was Marcus Freeman's first game. This is his third game as a head coach for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. He's 20-9. and nine. For 70% win percentage right there. It's like 69%. Not great. But of course, you got to get into your third year. You got to feel that out. Even if he wins these next 10 games, he'll be 30 and 9. About 74%. Brian Kelly in his last five seasons was an 87% percentage uh, winner. So, not looking good. And what was wrong with the game? I swear to you that Riley Leonard pass, that Riley Leonard second down and one, the fourth quarter, six minutes left, throwing it down the field, trying to throw it 40, 30, 40 yards, and he's short by 10 yards? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He can't throw the ball more than 20 yards. And of course there were other plays that he... He can run with his legs. And there were uh, a catch by a great house where he should have caught the ball. Sure. But how do you go on second and one with the game on the line and underthrow your wide receiver by 15 yards? Maybe it was 10. Maybe I'm exaggerating for the world of the podcast world. But I, I'm not. If you're a Notre Dame fan and you watch that, you would completely understand. You would see how insane that game was played and how insane our offense looked. We looked like we were getting manhandled. We looked like we were getting put to shame by a Mac team. Now, I hope, I hope to God that they go 12 and 0, but watch them lose some game in the middle of October that doesn't even matter, knocks them out, and then everyone dogs on us even more. We just tend to do this. It just happens as we like Notre Dame and as we support Notre Dame. It happens every single time. I still believe in the team. You guys may think, oh, he doesn't care anymore, or this or that. No. I care so much. I care too much for the fact of this happening to our team, a team that is supposed to be a top five team. We are a top five team on paper. But we're not executing. And that is just disgusting. That is just so hard to see. That is so hard to hear. It is so hard to watch. I don't even want to go outside. Like, the visceral hurt. Because last week, you go from the highest of highs of a Notre Dame win to the lowest of lows with a loss against NIU. And every team that comes here that hits their Super Bowl is something about Notre Dame Stadium something about playing there that there's no hype the students don't get crazy loud i think it's loud it's it's a beautiful place to play but it's a special experience for anyone that comes in there's no nobody's scared nobody it's like ah welcome welcome in have a great time i guess that's what we do but if we have an expectation to win and win football games how are we going to do it with this the way that we lose at home I mean, to lose to Stanford a, a year ago, too, just bad losses. Losing to Louisville, of course, they were a better team, but we were better. Our talent is there. The talent is literally 
right in front of us. And so to just see it go to waste is some of the most frustrating things in the world. I say we play Purdue this week. It's a battle of Indiana. Like people think, oh, it's just Purdue. No, I remember going to a few football games when I was younger because my parents went to Purdue. So boiler up, like they're they're tough. They have a lot to prove. They hate Notre Dame. They never get into the spotlight. Uh, yeah, they're a basketball school, but they had great football players and they've had great quarterbacks in the past. So what's going to happen is it's not going to be easy. I think we're two touchdown favorites. I'm, I'm not trusting in the guys. I will say Notre Dame is going to win this next game. And if they don't, I, I will. we will think about what I will do if Notre Dame does not win this next game. Maybe I'll do a thousand push-ups on live stream. If Notre Dame does not win this, and I and of course I'll be able to take breaks and stuff, but if Notre Dame does not win, I will I will have to do a thousand over a stream. And that is going to be so hard. Oh my god. I'm gonna go in sets of ten or twenty. Oh well. All right. I just I just uh cashed a check that I don't know if I <laughs> if I have enough money in the bank for. So go Irish. See I believe in my team. And punishment if I lose. But what we need to do this second half, what we need to do, uh, actually, just as we start this game, is we need to spread out the offense and have Riley Lennon throw the football. The first two downs, the first two possessions that we have, make him throw the ball. And if he can't throw the ball, get rid of him. Take him out. Prove to him. I know he's making a lot of money, and I know that there's this, you, you know, you don't want to lose confidence in this guy. But we have a guy named Steve Angeli who won our bowl game last year, who's fought here for years, wanted to be here at Notre Dame for years, wasn't just a transfer. And then we got CJ Carr, which he's the future. And this too shall pass. But if we don't have a guy that can throw the football and who looks like a little kid and kind of talks like he has a lisp and isn't captivating enough, get rid of him. It's it's better for all parties. This is what we expect. We expect a gold standard. I know we don't play like the gold standard, but we expect a gold standard. And we've recruited and done enough. We've done enough to get us to that. So it sucks. It sucks being one-on-one. I don't even want to go into the office. Everybody's... Wanting to say something to me, everybody is really excited to be like, "Oh, what happened? Oh, this and that." Uh, you'll see. I didn't even do an episode after we beat Texas A and M. I was happy. I felt jubilee. I made an Instagram post, just like out of excitement. It wasn't. It wasn't bragging. It wasn't we're better. I felt great. I felt like we were winning a game instead of playing not to lose. And that's why this is the craziest flip. But I think this is also the world of college football. And I think that this is the world of, wow, we are just living in some sort of matrix because watch them turn around and have a fantastic season. And it'll be egg on my face, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with egg on my face. This just needs to be the motivator. I actually just watched an little video and it was Tim Tebow being like that was a horrible performance but you will never see a guy that plays harder and fights harder for his team for the rest of the season that's what I want I have Freeman over here like pouting on on press conferences man up like he talks like he's like saddened and disappointed and doesn't have that confidence behind it and I think that that's Notre Dame football, there's not that confidence behind it. We're Notre Dame. Have the confidence. Because if you exude that confidence, then you expect that confidence, and then you do that. Even when you lose, you still go by the standard. The standard is the standard. Uh, whoever says that. But go in. Be excited. Go, go talk like we are better than them. Take your legs, sure, for the moment. But get amped. Get hype. I realize that I put my faith 
in a lot of people put their faith into college sports where these are just athletes that are 18 to 22 year olds that are literally just kids. And if we're lucky from Notre Dame, two to three guys a year go to the NFL where even then it's not always guaranteed, even though we're tight end you, O-line you, not quarterback you. I'll say that we are not. Uh, good wide receivers go, safety you, about to be cornerback you. Like we send guys, we bring guys into the system. But to see how we reacted and played against that team, we, we played down to the level. And you can't play down to the level. And it's unacceptable, but it's a, uh, it's something that we're going to be working towards to change. And I think that kind of moves us into this episode. So that's enough talk about Notre Dame. That's enough talk about Notre Dame football. It is near and dear to my heart. I love it for the day I die. But we got other things to talk about. We got luck management. And Ayo, this episode of Luck Management is brought to you by Charm ND. Love the Notre Dame Lucky Charms. I love Notre Dame. And when I went to school there, I wanted to have a way of holding a piece of Notre Dame in your hand. And the first iteration came from small little tubes and filling up with pieces from around Notre Dame. And it's evolved into a really cool and wonderful business that I truly cherish. And now we have necklaces, we have keychains, we have earrings, and we have bracelets. All of these pieces are from Notre Dame. So in our keychains, we have soil from Notre Dame's campus with 24 karat gold flakes. We have AstroTurf from the Notre Dame football stadium and wood shavings from the old seats of Notre Dame Stadium, a true classic of history and tradition of the Notre Dame football way. We also have gold helmets that are painted with the same gold that they use on the Notre Dame football helmets and from the Golden Dome, straight gold from the Golden Dome. All these pieces are so incredible to me and I hope that you all enjoy them. And you can find me on charm underscore ND on Instagram or you can go to our Etsy shop, which is charm ND store on Etsy. So please give it a check out. And love the charm ND. I have not done an episode for a little while. The last one was Jim Kumande, episode 98. And I wanted to do myself for 99. And I'm thinking that I might be myself for 100, too. Uh, there's been an interesting kind of flow of things. I think during the summer, you get busy, you're, you're doing stuff back and forth. Just some life updates. My brother got married, which is absolutely incredible and fantastic. Congratulations, RJ. I love you. Corinne, welcome to the family. We have celebration dinner this weekend. I get to have you know, make a speech, talk about your love and what you guys are. Um, it's truly something special to see. And I'm, I'm grateful to, to call you family, uh, Corinne, and, and just feel... Like there's an adage to the lotion. So uh, there's that, but there's, I also got a haircut. It's pretty, it's pretty dope. It's a little bit tighter than I thought it was going to be, but we go to Mike's haircut right down the street. And when I go to Mike's, it, I always think it's funny because it's Mike's haircuts, but it's a woman, it's woman run and it's all women, all Mexican women that only speak Spanish. So when I come walking in there, I'm just giving my best effort at my Spanish. And mind you, I've done Spanish for six to eight years. And so I know my Spanish and I can keep up with the conversation. And I was speaking to uh, Marguerite and she actually said I was doing very well in my Spanish. There's something about that in speaking to people from the Latin American countries versus the people in Europe. Like... When you're in Europe, it's like, oh, American, oh, disgusting, this or that, because it's it's the default. Oh, he's an American, he doesn't understand, he doesn't want to assimilate to the culture. When we do, 
and we want to learn. But yes, some of us are obnoxious. You got a few of those that are going through that are just like the worst. But when you're talking to people from Mexico or Belize or Costa Rica, when you try and you try and speak their language and you try to assimilate and try and you know, show that you're welcome, especially in our land, it's fantastic. And we we were kind of jumbled English, a little jumbled Spanish, and we could get through a conversation and it was just really nice. It felt cool to connect. It makes me kind of want to get back into Babel and it makes me kind of want to get into like language and conversations uh, in Spanish because there's such a huge Spanish population down here in Houston. But it's also one of those things where it's, it's cool to think that way or understand culture. I'm sitting in there and I hear them speaking Spanish and I'm trying to put together the words and see what's happening or what they're trying to say or if they're laughing at me probably laughing at me but yeah um i got my teeth cleaned today that was pretty cool i got four cavities guys i know i'm i'm ashamed of it uh, gotta put this out there i'm ashamed of it but i'm gonna get them filled and i had four last year so but not like I had four and then I have four new ones. I didn't do anything with them, but I boosted my hygiene. I started working on different, uh, no fluoride toothpaste, uh, mouth tape for sleeping, doing oil pulling, tongue scraping, all that stuff. And I still have the four. They actually saw that they reduced a little bit, which is wow. But I am uh, going to get those filled. I guess that kind of prompts me to tell you guys. I've been on a streak, almost two weeks of quitting nicotine. And so it's been really hard. And I've actually been on here trying to record and talk about nicotine, my thoughts on it and how I feel about it and what I'm going through. And the withdrawal is really hard. I've been on and off nicotine for probably about 10 years, maybe even longer. and. I've definitely gained some weight. I've definitely been more irritable and things like that. And, and sometimes the focus aspect is really hard. But I decided I, I need to have something that doesn't control me. Even though in its own right, like it, now quitting is controlling me. So it's like its own thing uh, of control that you just bounce around this different level of control. But I just decided that I get something to take charge of. Something that I can control in my life. I think that there's a lot of different factors in our lives where we just feel helpless. And I wanted to take back that power. And, and power is the wrong word, but like that ability to say, like, no, I don't need that. And, you know, it's money suck at one point, but also it's it's a pride thing. Um, and it's a health thing. I, I'd like to live for a very long time. I'd like to continue the luck management lifestyle. I'd like to uh, live to see my grandparents or my grandkids and my great grandkids. and and this is one of those things that can hurt that. So decided to take the step, but we definitely have had withdrawals back and forth. It's been about two weeks. Um, definitely had a little bit too, and then went off again, but been off again for coming up on like uh, eight days now, which is really, really cool. Uh, very hard. It's very, very hard. And people want to look at addictions and they want to look at these things and they, they can push it off or, oh, it doesn't matter. It's, it's alcohol and nicotine. It's regulated. It's okay. The government says it's fine. It's still something that can really have a hold and take up your life. I mean, no matter what, we're all addicted to something. And so I was truly going through this moment where I felt like I couldn't stop, where I was always on it or always getting it. And time and time again, I couldn't go anywhere without it or like I, I couldn't be separated from it. So it, it created dependency and stuff, but I'm working through it. Um, I'll keep all that updated. I'm sure that you guys don't always care so much, but I want to be vulnerable with you guys and let you know that like I am, I'm going through that tough time, but I feel a resolve and I feel like I'm getting stronger uh, and I feel like I'm growing in myself and I think that's going to come out to be a, a good part of my story and something I can 
have conversations with. You know, you gotta put yourself through hard things. You gotta put yourself through those tough moments because that's where you learn. That's where you get stronger. That's where you get better. And so I'm trying to do that. And uh, if any of you are dealing with that, like reach out to me and have a conversation with me too because that's hard and uh, I'm trying to learn through it. Like I go one of those like circle devices where you blow the air and it's supposed to like help you feel like you're, you're not smoking or like you're not getting that. And uh, it helps with anxiety. It helps with all these things. These things matter. These things you get the oral fixation and stuff. So if you're going through anything like this, please reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation with you. I'd love to like have somebody that I'm also going with it through because damn do I want to tell you what, man, tell you what I've gained a couple pounds. I'm like, yo, I've cut this back down, but I'm building muscle. We lift in, we build in muscle. We get in huge out here. It's bulking season, fall bulking season, get huge. Get huge for the boys. So that's happening. Um, and then, you know, I had this idea that on this next episode, I wanted to do a quick synopsis of what luck is and some fascinating topics that go across history, science, and different cultures. Um, and it's a part of like hum human imagination. Like this idea of luck, like what is, it? can we control it? Is it just this chance? Is there a science behind it? And you guys know every single time I have a guest, on, I say luck management is you know, this idea of the hard work you put in after a situation. But I think that there's so much more to it. And the fate of things, the way that the world works. And so I think that I'm going to bring this into episode 100. And I think that this was more of a check in with everyone. See how you're doing. See how life is treating you. Show you that I'm still alive here, that there are a lot of things moving, a lot of things changing in this world of headed into the fall, Houston. And to just let you know, like if, if things feel stagnant, looking for a change or you need something to change in your life, it's okay. A lot of people are going through that too. So stay in your resolve, stay strong, stay excited because there's so much ahead. But next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this idea of luck and how it's like a universal concept and then looking at it through different cultures and how it impacts cultures or, or how we look at it from a grand scale um, through different uh, nationalities, through different languages. And then I want to get into the science. Uh, you know, oh, you got lucky. Nobody just gets lucky. I mean, sometimes. Uh, and then being able to delve into this role of randomness and probability and how that works. And lastly, it's the basis of what this podcast is all about. Are we able to increase our luck? Are we able to boost our ability to have good things happen to us? And I definitively think yes. And I think it starts with the word yes. And I think it starts with the ability of opening yourself up and not closing yourself to things. But I want to get into that uh, nature of and then you get into the superstitions or the modern day rituals and stuff. So there's so many different microcosms of luck. And, and I'll go through a few different spaces where I felt lucky or unlucky. I don't really know if I'm lucky or unlucky. Maybe someone from the outside would think one thing. Somebody from the outside would think differently. I have had a lot of wonderful luck. I've had some bad luck. And I want to go into those sort of things. And what I want is I want you all to share your luck experiences. Uh, for anyone that hasn't been on the podcast, I want you to come on. I, I want to talk to you no matter what. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you think you are. You're not worth a podcast guest. I want to talk to every single person. And I just want to learn about their lives. Just have a conversation. Become friends. I love making friends at the end of the day. So this was just a quick 
little State of the Union, what's going on in the light. Had to get an episode out there. I mean, there were so many times where I was sitting there. I was like, I gotta record. I gotta record. And I just didn't do it. I just didn't record. I just never could get myself to record. I'm so happy I'm sitting here with you guys. Like, I'm truly excited to be able to be back in front of this chair with the cool ass setup I got back here and talking to you about rock management. It's my dream, it's my passion. And uh, I'm thankful to all of you that, that listen and, and care. So, uh, as always, you can find us on Apple, you can find us on Spotify. Uh, actually, before I go, Charm Indie, get you Notre Dame stuff. It's a little side business, I love it. It's something I care about, it's something that I, I do sharing actual pieces of Notre Dame with people. And if you think that the prices are fair or not fair, reach out to me. I'll, I'll send you something or we can test out stuff. I mean, you can see some of the stuff here. Keychains, necklaces, bracelets. I, I try and bring cool stuff to Notre Dame. And also buy Teresa McKenna's book, Love and Christmas Letters. It's really cool, Notre Dame stuff. Um, but yeah, as always, you can find us on Apple. Find us on Spotify, and you can definitely find us on YouTube. So keep them in the luck management lifestyle. First, Ayo, luckies. This is Carter Loge from the Luck Management Podcast, and it is my distinct pleasure today to announce T-shirts have been released. Available on my Instagram page for the underscore luck management, and also on Charm ND's Etsy shop. And now these shirts are a great way for you to rep your love for the podcast, your appreciation and support for the show, and just to share and sh- work out in, go walking in, walk your dog in. Heck, go to the pool in the shirt. Somebody sees it, whoa, that's such a cool shirt. Where'd you get that? Yeah, it's a really cool podcast. You should check it out, the Luck Management Podcast. And, you know, this shirt, even though it's simple, it embodies the luck management lifestyle. And I would so appreciate it if you would consider purchasing it and wearing it in pride and in your love for Notre Dame. So please check it out and keep living the luck management lifestyle. Peace.